So now that we've created our parts list, we're gonna go ahead and create our pressure network. So in order to create a pressure network, what you have to do is you navigate to the home tab of the ribbon bar, drop down under pipe network, and then navigate to the pressure network creation tools. If you had a object that you wanted to create a pressure network based off of, then you could use the create pressure network from object. If you had an industry model, you could use that industry model to create a pressure network from it. We're gonna go ahead and use the pressure network creation tools. And then when we select that option, the create pressure pipe network window comes up. We're gonna change our network name to dev H2O because this is our water line for our development. We're gonna use a parts list uh, that we just created, which is 12 trunk. And then we are going to specify the target surface, which is important because our target surface tells our pressure network at what depth to be below a certain surface. And so I know from our development profile that our EG surface for the most part is always underneath our development profile. So I can use the EG surface to dictate the depths on my pipe. There's a small portion in here where it's slightly above the development profile. And so if I wanted to, I could set my design depth a little lower to account for that issue right in there. And then I would have more than enough cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and select EG as my surface name. I'm gonna go and not specify an alignment to associate this network with. I am also not gonna label any of the parts of the pressure network yet. So we're gonna go ahead and click OK. And what you'll notice is that the toolbar for pressure networks is different than the toolbars for everything else that we've done in Civil 3D so far. This toolbar is locked up in the ribbon bar. It's not a movable toolbar like all the other toolbars we've dealt with. So we have to work with it up in here, but it works exactly the same as any of the other toolbars. So we have a network settings area where we have our network properties, the surface we're targeting, the alignment that we would be linked to, our parts list, and then our cover condition. So if I wanted to modify this cover condition from three, all I have to do is type in a number for my cover condition, and then I would have enough cover in the areas where I might think that I could be having a problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this as four. I'm gonna go over to the next area, which is you select your material size, your pipe size. We only offered a 12 inch pipe in our parts list. So that's the only option available for us in this dropdown. From here, you have your layout methods, you have your pipes and bends and pipes only. Pipes and bends is a better way to lay out because it allows you to place the elbows that we put into our parts list at the time that you're placing the pipes. If you do pipes only, you're only allowed to place the pipes based on deflection. And so it's it doesn't work that well. I, I much prefer pipes and bends. So we're gonna go ahead and go with the pipes and bends method. If you do a pipes only method, or if you stop in the middle of building a network and you need to start again, you can add fittings to start that network over again or to add a missing part or something like that. You can drop down, select the part you wanna add and then choose add fitting or drop down, choose the appurtenance you want and then choose add appurtenance. From here, we have the modify section, which has pretty self-explanatory modifying tools. We have swapping parts, breaking pipes, moving parts, sliding parts, and then our panorama edit window for our network. Next to that is the compass, and we'll show what the compass is when we're creating our network, but just know that anything about the compass is in this area right here. So now that we have gone through this, we're gonna go ahead and start laying out our pipe using the pipe and bends method. And so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is when you selected your pressure network creation tool, it automatically jumped you into the pipes and bends method if you didn't want to use it, you could select pipes only, or you can click on pipes and bends and it gets you out of the command. So I'm going to go ahead and click pipes and bends. It's asking me to specify first pressure pipe point. What I did is I created a line that I knew would allow me to have a nice 90 degree bend around this corner. So what I did is I laid out a line along the sewer line here, and then I offset it up. I offset it down and out 10 feet, and then I projected it at a 90 degree up to here. So I'm gonna use this green line that's right in here and I'm gonna snap to the end of it. And then I am going to 
come and follow along and snap to the end of it down here. And so now what you get to see is you get to see the compass. So what the compass is, is it is a circle with tick marks at the locations of the bends that we have in our parts list. So we have our 90, our 45, our 22 and a half, and our 11 and our zero. So from these, you can lay out your pipes. Since I set this up to be a 90, I'm gonna go ahead and go with a 90 here. I'm gonna shoot down to this end down here. And then I am going to click in. And as you can see, I have the compass again. I don't wanna be going this way. So none of these other bends are gonna work for me. I have to go with this 90. But the problem is, is that this alignment isn't perfectly 90 in the corners. And so you'll see my pipe is coming way out over here. If I hit enter to close out of that command, I don't wanna move these pipes around to try and get this to function better. So what I can do is I can force a deflection. So in this pipe, in your, in your pipe parts list. So I, if I go to pressure network and I go to parts list and I go to 12 trunk, I look, click edit and I go to my pressure pipe and I go to my 12 inch pipe and I choose edit on it. What you'll notice in here is there is an allowable deflection. That allowable deflection allows me to set a standard for how much this pipe can sweep or change from being perfectly 90 degrees into that fitting. And so if I go to the grip edits for this pipe, what I can do is I can select this diamond grip right here, which if I hover over it, you can see it says deflection. I can select this and what Civil 3D shows me is it shows me allowable deflection. So out here at the yellow is my five degrees of deflection and then zero degrees of deflection here in the center. So if I wanted to deflect this out, I could deflect it out to let's say, what's the one, two, three, four, so we can deflect out to four degrees and then click here. And what you'll see happen is this pipe is now deflecting out this way. And if I zoom into this fitting here, you'll see this pipe is coming in perfectly 90 and flush with the face of this elbow. But this one has a little bit of a, a deflection to it. And that's acceptable within the range of the pieces in my parts list. So now that we've laid this out, we're gonna go ahead and move into the next video where we're gonna take this network and we're gonna put it into a profile.